Freedom Island. Well, I slept good last night, and that was a nice change. Nobody in this family has ever slept good. Daddy didn't. Mom didn't. My brother had nightmares, and uh, he would sleepwalk, and I would have scary dreams, too, and wake up and be confused like I used to wake up and just didn't know where I was at, like, uh, you know, worried and looking around and take me a second to, to get sorted out. And if there's anything on any of our minds, it'll keep us awake, you know. None of us can watch those scary movies or monsters or, you know, anything like that. Or even somebody tell us a scary story or mom used to like to watch Matlock. You know, it was that Andy Griffith and he, when he got gray hair and then he was a detective or a attorney or something. I can't remember why he would look into things, but whatever he done. Mom had bad dreams for, oh gosh, two or three weeks because... It was supposed to be funny, but mom didn't find it funny. They uh, started the show with Matlock came into the office and his office door was open. And then, you know, of course, he shut it for privacy. And when he shut his door, there was a, a dead person that was propped up stiff behind the door. And then, you know, when he shut the door, they came, you know, falling forward like an ironing board that used to come out of the wall. You know, so this dead person, you know, hit the hit the carpet there. Poor mom, you know, <laughs> she'd wake up saying, he's behind the door, he's behind the door. And daddy would say, there's nobody behind the door. Margaret, it's all right. You know, that's how we are. So I guess it's not surprising with everything I've been thinking about that I've had kind of restless sleep. Plus, of course, if the kids stay over, we never know when that's going to happen because their mom, which is my brother's first wife, she's got custody, but she sometimes she just doesn't want to deal with them I guess and so they'll be here sometimes I don't even know they're here and they'll come and hop into bed with me and scare me half to death because I don't even know they were here and they just come and jump on the bed like it's a trampoline or something I don't know what they learn at home but don't knock or nothing but there you go between the kids and all this situation with Uncle Boyce I guess it's not a wonder that I've had some problems with my sleep but I slept good last night, probably tired out, but whatever reason it was, it was good because it helped me get my thinking where I wanted it to be. I was pondering and pondering about that Android smartphone that I charged up, and then I couldn't decide if maybe I had already got myself too far into this. And then I decided, you know, sometimes I worry, and then sometimes I just get paranoid. And there's people that's told me that they think that I sound like a little bit too far from being worried to something else. And I, I think that could be true, maybe. People say, just try to get clear in your mind. Sort out one thing from another. Is that a real thing that you're worried about? Or is it where your mind has built it up into something more than what it is? That's definitely that part I have done. I have took things that wasn't that big of a deal and worked it up in my mind where I made it into something. And then it felt like a lot of times I was cornered or like trapped or in some situation. And I mean, that's where some of the trouble I got into at various times was sometimes I couldn't see that I did still have a choice. I could have done something else. I could have chose different, but I would feel like I doomed, like, you know, and I think that's what was happening to me when I was thinking about the phone and trying to figure out about what's going on with these crazy people that Boyce has been connecting with on the YouTube and all that. And I think I was starting to think that looking into it or finding out about it, just looking on the internet or something, that somehow secret spy eyes was looking at me. You know, I covered up my tablet computer. I covered up that lens, you know, and Lauren was making fun of me for putting a post-it note over it, and maybe I do worry too much, I guess. But I don't think we're in, um, what's that book that you have where there's a TV in your house, and you watch it, but it's watching you? Um, 1984. We're not in a 1984 yet. 
just because I'm looking at things on the computer. I mean, I know they track you. You know, if you if you put in Google, you want to buy some shoes, you're going to see shoes when you go somewhere else. You know, go to eBay or something like that. Then you're going to see shoes because of what you put in Google. I know that. But I mean, I do know enough to know if I go on a place to look at the news or something on the Internet, they're not watching me. They don't look back at me. It's like a TV set. It don't watch you. You watch it. I think maybe I might have been a little bit too over-concerned. i got to be careful. I know I have to be careful because I know who I'm fooling with. But I think when I was getting so worried, I was tired out and had some other things on my mind. But now I've got some sleep. And I'm not ready to go crazy and go forward and do a lot of dangerous things or foolish things. But now I feel more clear-eyed. Maybe it's just coffee. I had some good Folgers this morning. <laughs> you know, a couple of cups of coffee, sometimes it, it'll pass for brains if you don't got no brains. But it, things look better to me now. So I think I can trust to look, think about what I want to do, and decide, and not just panic and run away. You know, I can always back up. I don't think I'm going to get myself into anything I can't back out of. I might feel like I got stuck, got cornered got put in a box and I can't get out of it. But that's my thinking. If you go to NA or AA, they call that stinking thinking, where you get in your mind, you make a problem you don't even have. And I think that's what I've been doing. We'll see. Okay, what would be the worst thing if these crazy people got hold of my information from the smartphone? Well, it's not like they would definitely know everything about me, even if they could get my address or find out things about me. They're not close to here. They don't really know. All they know is about the phone. They don't know who has the phone, where the phone is at. So I could say that somebody took it. You know, and in this neighborhood, people would believe it. And also, if it just started doing something scary or bad, like if it was giving bad messages to me that was scaring me or I didn't like it, I could just throw it in the bathtub or something, fill it up with water and throw it in there so it couldn't do any more bad messages. And then if I had to, I could tell somebody that's what happened. I could just be honest and tell them what I was doing. And then I went too far. I pushed these numbers in here and then it started going crazy on me and I didn't know what else to do to make it quit. So I just threw it in the bathtub and killed it. You know, I could do that instead of doing my flip phone because I need my regular phone because, you know, I watch these kids and stuff. And uh, while the smartphone was charging up and I could see it had a way to go yet, I got busy and got to my dishes washed and I did whatever I needed to do in my life. Anyways, not like I was lacking in things to do. I kept myself busy. And then every once in a while, I go look at the phone I could really see it was full, but I was scared, so I pretended like I wasn't sure if it was full, so I waited a little bit longer, and then I came back, and I said, now you're just being silly. You know that's done. I unclipped it from the wall. I typed in the numbers in the text thing, and then I pushed send, and then it just sent me back a block message that said, welcome to our secure network of freedom something. I don't remember what now. It wasn't scary. I didn't feel like there's anything that was making my hair stand on it or anything to look at it. And then it said, uh, for further security, uh, we use encrypted messaging. From your device, download the Signal app. And I was trying to picture what kind of signals it was. Did they mean like it was like, I mean, I know this is stupid, but I was starting to think like cartoons or something. And I was thinking about those semaphore flags you know, <laughs> that they have on a ship. And it's like, uh, oh, you know, they've got like different colors, a diagonal, you know, and you hold it up this way and it spells out like SOS or something. And I thought, you know, what the hell are you thinking about? It's not semaphore and it's not a code. It's not a, it's, I didn't know if it was the phone signal. Like if it made the phone signals, I, uh, cloak it some way so that the government can't see it or something because that was the other thing that was in the message was like it was private from the government was one of the reasons with this encryption thing but it turns out 
I had seen once I started up the smartphone that there's a part where you can check on the internet. Like there's a part where you open up a browser like you do on your computer, but you do it on the phone. There's that part. But there's another way where you can look on the phone or the people that make the phone for things that works inside the phone. And that's where apps are. There was a thing at the top that was not looking for the internet. It said find app or get an app or something like that. So I typed in S-I-G-N-A-L and then I figured out how to make it. You have to send like a little paper airplane. You have to like push a little thing. I couldn't figure out how to get, you know, it took me a couple tries, but finally I figured out how to make it, tell it that that's what I wanted to do. Signal S-I-G-N-A-L. And then I, I told it to send it. And that turned out to be the name of it. It's called Signal. It's not describing it. It's what its name is. And it's not anything illegal or, uh, I don't know. It's not It's not made by Ted Edward Jones that boys hangs around with. And a lot of people can have it. And it's a way where you want to message people and you don't want other people to get it. It could be for a bad reason, like you could be sneaking around and getting ready to do something evil. But it also could be for a good reason that you don't want somebody to steal your information. You know, say if you're letting your sister use your credit card or something like that and you want to send her the numbers and you don't want them to read it or you don't want to tell somebody when you're going to be home if you got one of those crazy stalker ex-boyfriends or whatever. So I could see how you could use it for good or you could use it for bad. I went ahead and put it on my phone. Then there's another part in this booklet, my freedom and my rights or my responsibility. There's one more part you have to do after that, which is you have to use the Signal app, and then they tell you how to go from that to hook onto them. And I'm going to be honest, I'm just not up to it yet. I didn't have to throw the phone in the tub, but I'm feeling like the more I go in this, the more I can't get back out again. It reminds me of, I was reading a story about, you know, that movie, The Great Escape, like the prison. And it was a real story. It really happened. And I was reading a book of it where they were telling more the things that's not in the movie. They made a big, long tunnel. That's how they got out. They made a big, long dirt tunnel, you know, and then they could get out under the fence and then emerge out, you know, away from the camp. And then they had to run away and get over to the lines where there was, you know, neutral or friendlier soldiers. And when the first people went through, they were the bravest ones, I guess, because really they went through and they had to see if, if the dirt tunnel was going to cave in on them. And so the first three or four that got out, they were the very bravest ones, I guess. And then a whole bunch of people went in after them. And of course, they all wanted out of there. They all wanted out of there. There's a lot of people that wanted to go through that tunnel. So there's a bunch of people that went after those first ones. And they were just crawling around on their stomach and it was a long way to go. And they've got the foot of the person in front of them. And then behind their feet, they've got the face of the next person that wants to go right behind them. And those people were just kind of follow each other. I'm not saying they weren't brave, but they could just go right behind the person in front of them. They were getting through all right. But then the more people that went through, the more it loosened up the dirt and the more it... Uh, scraped the walls of it and you know it was shaking it also the more longer they went the more time the guards might know that what they were doing so the longer you were in there you might come out and you're not in your freedom place you're there looking at a machine gun pointed right down at your face there toward the end there's a few people that couldn't get out because that's all those things started happening it the germans did figure out that they were getting out the prisoners and then also the tunnel was starting to cave in and there was people couldn't get out people in the middle couldn't go forward and they couldn't go back and i think they got smothered in the dirt and that's what i'm scared of i'm scared that i'm going to get myself in the middle of this and then i'm going to realize i've got myself in too far and then i'm not going to be able to get out i feel like i'm in between like if you ask the u.s government i'm a bad person because i had to go to court order drug counseling and get marks against me and 
uh, I couldn't work while I was doing all of that. And I had to get help from, you know, my food and medical and all that stuff. And um, I consorted with some people that wasn't the greatest people. I wasn't going out of my way to hang around with bad people. But if you've got a pill situation going on, there's only a certain kind of person that you can get pills off of. And sometimes they are not the greatest people. That's just honest. And there were some times where I didn't have money up front. And so I had to do some trading and some bartering with people. And I had traded and bartered with people back and forth here and there. And I don't absolutely know where everything came from that people were trading me. They told me where they got it, but you don't know. I can see how if you are the United States government, you look at me, I seem like I'm a pretty bad person, but I'm not a bad person. I'm a good person. I did make some mistakes and I wish I wouldn't have, but you can't go backwards just like a person that's stuck in that tunnel. Sometimes you can't go backwards. You just have to wait and try to go forward the best you can. And that's what I did. But these people that voice and them are joining up as a big group, that is scary bad. And I don't know. I think another person would say, probably somebody with some sense, would say, you're not an FBI, Bethany. You're not a secret spy. Why are you trying to get in the middle of this and fix this? But you have to know how it is. That's why in the movies, when they got the police informants and stuff, that's why. It's because the police don't know what's going on day to day. It's the informants, right? And I'm not being like a rat informant. I'm not like telling on people their secrets. I'm the other way around. You know, I covered up for my brother. But what I'm saying is that I know things. I don't see how the police could ever find out what's going on with boys and them. They don't trust nobody that they don't know. And they would they would figure you out in two seconds. Even if you tried to dress like them and talk like them and drive a car like them. They would know something wasn't right with you, you know? They're not going to be able to really get in here and see. By the time they see what's wrong, it's too late. Some bad thing already happened. This was nothing I wanted anything to do with. But I seem like I'm the only one that knows. As I've said before, I'm not a person they listen to. I can't go to the police and say, listen here, Mr. Police, let me tell you how it's going to happen. These bad things are going to happen. You you know, you think they're going to write that all down and type it up and put it on their to-be-investigated list? You know, no. I feel like, I'm not even sure how I'm going to tell them. Like, when I figure out what boys and them are doing, I'm not even sure how I'm going to tell because I don't want it to come back on me. But I figure if I can get some specific details, some, I don't know, evidence, some way, then maybe I could put it in an envelope or a paper or put it in a mailbox or I don't know. I haven't figured that part out yet. But first thing to do is to have something that I can show or something that I can prove or something I can convince them with so they can see what, what they ought to be looking at. But I am scared. And then here at the exact same time, I'm also scared that I am not a super criminal and I do not have a really good plan for how to take care of myself. So what if they come back on me? And I don't want to be laying at night afraid in my bed hearing a creak or a groan or a click of a door or, I don't know, I've seen some bad movies. They put a bag over your head and put you in a car and take you somewhere. That just sounds scary. But if people don't help get rid of the scary people when they know what they're doing, then everybody's going to be scared. They're going to get everybody. They want to join in on this. These people, these freedom rights uh, flag nutty people they get excited they get together and it feels like a pep rally like at school like rah rah team only it's like rah rah you know blow things up i guess but they get excited you know they get alive they feel like they're got a reason to be they feel like they're important they feel like they understand things and they they feel like somebody understands who they are it's real attractive it's real it's like a religion like only not any of the good things in the bible just the I'm going to not do anything for today. And then I think I'm going to try to sleep a couple nights. You know, if I watch a scooby dooby doo and it makes me have a scary dream about a skull coming up out of a treasure chest that's 
making me cry like them little kids on the couch. Then maybe if I get too wrapped up in this, I'm not going to be able to sleep at all, you know? I'm going to wait. I think I'll wait two nights and see, can I sleep at night? What does my mind tell me? What does my heart tell me? What does God tell me? And see what I think. And then I'll decide if I'm going to use this Signal app. I'm just not sure.